what are the general trends when we're talking on containment in, in pharmaceutical industries and chemical industries? Welcome back to my blog. I have here with me Armin Scheuermann, who is editor-in-chief of Pharma and Food and Chemie Technik, two papers in uh, Germany um, dealing with containment. So what's your view on this? Well, as we st when we started more than 10 years ago with the topic, or to, to focus on the topic, um, we saw a strong trend in the chemical industry towards dust-free production and in the pharmaceutical industry towards higher potent uh, drugs. And um, the, the combination of both was, the, was uh, containment. And the specialization of the chemical industry um, is driving these trends till today. And in a pharmaceutical industry, I see there's no way around containment. But what's your view? Is this such a strong trend that we uh, uh, share together? Yeah, it is really a very strong trend. And well, it started 25 years ago when, when this all began talking about containment, split butterfly valves were invented, and, and uh, people were looking more to the active uh, ingredients and to the active nature of the API. And uh, well, this trend is getting stronger and stronger in the last 10 years. We see that uh, there's really a growing, growing and growing market. Mm -hmm. From the pharmaceutical side, we see that there is uh, the need for um, the protection of the product stands in the, uh, in, in the focus of the pharmacists. But in the chemical industry, they want to protect the operator from the product. Um, do we share this view in, in both, um, in, in both uh, industries or is it, uh, are these different approaches? I think it's the same approach because, well, highly active ingredients, they are highly active. And so very small portions of an ingredient A is very drastically polluting and contaminating an ingredient B. And so when you're looking at containment, you're looking that A doesn't mix into B or B into A, and you're looking that the operators are not medicated. I can remember times when OEB3 or OEB4 was the end of the ladder, and uh, we thought, okay, more isn't possible. But now we are talking about OEB5, maybe OEB6. What do you think? Where is the, the end of this uh, development? It seems there's no end. It seems it's always going on and, and well, the activeness of the active ingredient, this will rise we will, uh, we for a long time, not at the end. But when you're looking at oral solid dosage forms, like we are producing them or with our machines they are produced, there the application is always the same. It's a tablet of, let's say, 200 milligram and when years ago it was 50 milligram of, of active ingredient, now it's five or even one milligram, and it will be less, I'm quite sure, but the say, size of the tablet will be more or less the same. We, we are looking at dilution and, and uh, also uh, how, how the active ingredient is handled, but the tablet in the end, this will be the, the diluted form uh, where we in the end have then the active ingredient. I can imagine that it, at some point it will not be possible to keep the process under control with manual uh, operations. Yeah. Um, what are the technical uh, aspects in that? You're right. The active ingredients are getting more and more potent and small and smaller quantities will be required to medicate a person. And as we don't want to medicate our operators, we have to look for something to save them. And so robotics will be a topic that will come in the next future for us. But this is something and others we will talk about in the next session. And then uh, I'm looking forward to seeing you again and stay healthy and stay tuned.